maggot will actually crawl one way up, normally with a feed spot on top. So if that's the case, we need to hook the maggot a certain way. If we pick the maggot up and we find out where the feed spot is, or the feed sack, as it's sometimes called, which is on the top, we need to hook the maggot from behind, like so. Okay, the reason being now is that when that crawls along the bottom, the hook will be upwards, just like so. You see? Now, if the hook was in, if we hook the maggot through the other way, then the point would be dragging along the bottom, and there's more chance of it snagging the bottom. So if we hook the maggot upwards from the feed spot, the point will always face upwards. And when a fish will come along, and suck that up, we got to ch when we strike, the hook will go upwards up into the, hopefully, the top of the mouth. Another way of hooking maggots is through the mouth. Now, normally we do that when we get shy bites. In other words, the fish is just nipping the end of the maggot. So what we do, we hook the maggot in the top end of the mouth, like so. Okay? Sometimes when we fish double maggot, we top and tail them. In other words, we hook a maggot through the mouth and through the, the two eyes at the top. That gives a, a crawling away and a crawling to effect. Okay. We also thread our maggots. That is another method, sometimes to hide the hook. What we do, we hook the maggot from the top and we push the maggot up the shank of the hook. So the whole of the hook is concealed within the maggot. And if we sometimes add a second maggot onto the point like so yeah. it's another attractive way of hooking the maggots this is the way we hook a caster I like to conceal the hook right inside the caster, like so. What we do, we go, we enter the caster through the top end, we pull the caster round, with our thumb, we just push the spade into the caster so it's completely concealed. Okay. And if you squeeze the caster, you'll, and squeeze out some of the yolk, and let go, it, it forms like a, a suction, which keeps the hook inside the caster. So when you cast, you float out, the caster stays on the hook. Another method of hooking the caster is hook it like a maggot, just through the top. Double casters again. We hook the caster halfway down. and then through the top. So you've got a double cast of eight. As you would when fishing with maggots, select a large caster for the hook. A mid-toned caster like this one can easily be seen in both colored and clear water conditions. Use a size 18 crystal bend hook and pierce the blunt end first. Carefully work the hook right inside the bait, like so, making sure you don't crush the caster. And there you have it, a perfectly hooked caster. If you intend fishing with a whole lobworm for the likes of carp, perch, 
tench, chub or barbell, it's best to hook the worm in the saddle, the toughest part of the worm. Using a size 4 hook, push the point straight through the saddle like so. Many fisheries insist that anglers use barbless hooks, so it pays to push a small section of elastic band onto the hook to prevent the worm wriggling off. If you're after smaller fish, a broken dendrobina might be the answer. Just cut the worm in half and pass your hook through the broken end. The fish will home in on the juices escaping from the worm and therefore they'll take the hook bait first. White bread's best for hook bait and there's no simpler way to obtain a small bread hook bait than to push a bread punch into a slice. To remove the pellet of bread, simply slide your hook up through the groove within the punch. You may need to position the bread correctly on the hook before fishing. If you're targeting larger fish, bread flake may be better. Use a size 14 or 12 hook and simply wrap and squeeze a small piece of white bread around the hook shank. Paste is a brilliant warm water carp bait which is extremely versatile and easy to mix. You can get away with using very large hooks when fishing with paste as the bait should be molded right around the hook like so. Don't worry about masking the hook point as you'll strike straight through the bait upon a bite. One of the easiest ways to hook dog biscuits is to glue them onto the shank of a size 10 hook. Use a hacksaw to cut a groove into the bait and then fill the groove with a little super glue. Push the hook shank into the groove and leave to dry for 20 seconds. The bait will float for up to 30 minutes when presented in this way. The best way to hook boilies is to hair rig them. You will need scissors, an eyed hook, a baiting needle, the bait itself, a swivel, hair stop and a hook length. First, tie a tiny loop in the end of your chosen hook length. Now pass the baiting needle right through the boilie and clip the loop onto the end of the needle. Draw the needle back through the bait and open up the loop like so. Pass your strip of hair stops through the loop and gently pull on the hook length to trap a hair stop. Snip off the unwanted hair stops. Now pass your hook length through the back of your eyed hook. Pull the hook length through until the bait almost touches the hook. Now whip the hook length around the shank, working towards the point as you whip. Continue whipping until the hook length lines up with the hook point. Now work the hook length through the back of the eye and pull tight. When it hits the water, the PVA will melt away, 
leaving the hook bait right alongside the free offerings. Perfect. 